we've got these uh, producers here who want us to just to have this thing excellent, all of that kind of thing. We're here, we're here this morning. Glad that you are here. Uh, going to be ready to, to praise the Lord with us. The uh, praise team is here. We're recognizing social distancing as best that we can. Uh, just on our announcement this morning, Stefan is going to lead us in our devotion. Sean um, Aguilar is going to be doing the preaching on today, so I ask that you would be praying for Sean. And that again, that we know is already on our schedule to do it that way, so we didn't change the schedule that we had other than uh, we swapped out one week from another. I preached last week, and he's going to be preaching on this week based on the schedule that Pastor Johnson has put together for us. So let's keep that in mind. We are here only for the purpose of worship. Yeah. We're here for the purpose yeah. of praise. Yeah. So don't do it in your bed. Don't be laying up in your bed watching like you're watching television. No, yeah. be in a chair somewhere, be on a couch somewhere, upright, ready to give God the praise that he so rightfully yeah. deserves. All right, please, ma'am, please, sir, let's keep that in mind going forward. So based on the time that I think we have, in one minute, we're going to officially start. But right, right now, you're going to kind of be here in the group. They're going to be kind of rolling along. And then once we officially start, Stefan again is going to be leading us out of our devotion.
are worshiping with us uh, through our virtual online gathering this morning. We're going to look at Rebecca chapter 3 this morning. Rebecca chapter 3. I'm going to read starting at the 16th verse. And it reads this way. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not blossom, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Amen. Habakkuk is writing now, and he's talking about what kind of, in a morbid sense, has been going on for the people at this time. And he's not really, if you will, delivering a message of hope, but it's a it's a message of God is not going to deliver us. Mm. Uh, he has us in this place right now, and I don't really know when or how long or to what end God is going to take us out of this. Mm. Wow. And he's seen uh, as the attack is coming upon them, and he knows that danger ensues. Mm. And he knows that there will be a lot of loss, there will be a lot of death. And he's basically praying and saying, telling the people of God, I don't know when, how, what, why we're in this situation, but all I know is that all I can do is pray. Yes. And while I'm praying, while I'm receiving this message from God, I'm coming as I'm standing here today preaching to you, telling you I don't have a message of hope. I can't tell you God will make a way. I can't tell you when he's going to do it. I can't tell you he's going to bring us out. But I know that we're in a hard time right now. I've seen God do it before, but I don't know what he's going to do right now. He talks about this in chapters 1 and chapter 2. Then he comes to chapter 3. And he says so much so that his heart is, is pounding. His lips are quivering as he can hear the horses coming at him knowing that they are coming to, to kill him. Mm -hmm. He knows that God is not going to deliver. And what he literally does, almost in uh, this particular context, he picks up the Houston Chronicle. Mm -hmm. And when he picks up the Houston Chronicle, he, he begins to read all of the, the bad news. <laughs> and he sees how everything is shut down. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cut off, if you will. The NASDAQ has fallen. The, the Dow has gone down. The stock market has right been now. driven up. Right he looks around and he, he sees the grocery stores. There's no food on the shelves at H-E-B. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no toilet paper at Walmart. There's, there's, there's no soap and water at Kroger. He, he looks at all of this. He sees all of this. He said, everything is yeah. shut down. I've been to the university. That's, that's shut down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I've gotten my degree know from life and sufficiency has been shut down. All right. So I'm asking you the question as you look at me this morning through virtual worship, how can you trust God when everything has been shut Come down? On now. Come on, tell it. When everything has been yeah. cut off. When everything that you know to be as normality has been no more. Mm. Your job is no longer there. Your own furlough. There's no food in the grocery store. There's no place to go. There's the school is shut down. The university is shut down. You don't know what your 401k is going to look like. But everything is shut down. 
And then look at what he says in verse number 17. Yet I will wait patiently for the yes, day of calamity yes, to come to the nation invading us. Mm. Verse 17, though the fig tree does not blossom, mm. though there's no food in the grocery store, mm. and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce yeah. no good, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet yes. I will yeah. rejoice yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. When he, when he says, yet I will rejoice yes. in the Lord, what he's literally now stressing is, no matter what I'm going through, yes. I will still rejoice yes. in the Lord. Yes. But then he goes on to say, I will be joyful mm. in God, my Savior. Mm. So what he's literally saying is, in Hebrew is, when he says, yet I will rejoice mm. and I will be joyful in the God, my Savior, yes. he says, not if I have money, yeah. not if I have a job, yes, not if I can go to school, not if yeah. I can make it to the grocery store, not if yeah. everything yeah. is good, yeah. but in spite of everything that's going on around me, I will rejoice yeah. in the Lord. And when he says, I'll be joyful in God, he says, if I don't know nothing else, I know that God has already done it for me before, and if he's done it for me before, he can do it again. And when he says, I'll be joyful in the Lord, what he's literally saying is, every time I turn around, the Lord keeps on blessing me. Look, that's an old song that they, that they used to sing back in the day that says, every time I turn around, the Lord keeps on blessing me. So what he's literally saying is, I'll turn around. And when I get through turning around, I'll jump up and down. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Can you trust God in this hard time? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can you trust God in this oh, yes. pandemic predicament? Mm. Can you trust God when everything is shut down? Mm. Yes, Lord. Let us pray. Yes, thank, thank you, God. Lord, thank you for who thank you are. Father. Yes, sir. We know that you are the God of our strength. Yes, you are, God. The God of our salvation. salvation. We know that we can trust you yes, Lord. when things are not will mm -hmm. because you've shown us so many times that you can make all things anew yeah. you can make all things afresh yeah. so God as we are waiting patiently for this, this pandemic to come to its end allow us to trust you allow us to continue to worship you allow us to rest in the confidence of knowing that you are the God that can bring us out Lord, you've been keeping us, even for those who may have lost jobs or lost money, you've been, you've been keeping us. Even for those who don't know when they'll return back to work or return back to school or return back to the normalcy of life, Lord, you've been keeping us. So, Lord, thank you for being a keeper. Lord, we thank you that we're still able to have this avenue of worship. For those who are listening, for those who are looking, allow them to know that we can still worship you in spirit and truth. Yes. It doesn't matter where we are, Father God, you are everywhere with us. We can be driving down the streets of Houston worshiping you. We can be sitting in our living rooms, in our dining rooms, in our bedrooms worshiping you. We can be outside on our patios worshiping you. Father God, we can be in our cars worshiping you. We can be on our jobs worshiping you. So, Father God, allow us to worship you. Because you are yes. that good to us. You are that powerful to us. So Lord, so I pray for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that needs a word from you today. Mm. Loud. Speak out. I pray that you would be that word to us. Yes. That you would speak to us. Yes. That you would speak through us. Yes. So that a world may know that you are the yes. God of all comfort. Lord, that you are taking care of us. Because in your word, you said, be not weary in well-doing. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, we trust in your word today. Yes. We trust in your word that says, we shall mount up on wings as eagles, mm. run and not get weary. Lord, help us to celebrate you today as we yes. clap our hands, as we yes. stomp our feet, as we lift up our voices. Yes. Allow us to worship you in spirit and truth. Because worship can make us feel better. Yes. 
He can make us feel better. Lord, we need to hear from you today. A world needs to hear from you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And we ask that you would have your way in this place today. Yes, yes, God. Yes, God. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
father coming with our children's song, we know that um, God has the whole world.
If you could, uh, just give a hand up of praise for this.
there was a young man who was first diagnosed at age 13 with two rare forms of cancer, one being Hodgkin's disease and the other Askin's sarcoma. He was given just 14 days to live and is the only person in the world to have ever been diagnosed with both of these deadly cancers at the same time. It is estimated that he would have been more likely to win the lottery four times with the same numbers mm -hmm. than to have survived both of these terminal cancers. Mm -hmm. However, this young man would go on, mm -hmm. even from the age of 13 and only having 14 days to live, mm -hmm. he would find a way to graduate from high school in 1993 and then to graduate college in 1997. Yes. He decided to go on to be a beacon for cancer survivors and he has now become the first cancer survivor and the only person to do the following. Mm. Summit Mount Everest and the highest peaks in Africa, Europe, South America, Antarctica, Australia, and North America, thus completing mm -hmm. the seven summits of the world. Mm -hmm. He went on to complete the Hawaii Ironman Championship, and all of this done after two deadly cancers given 14 days to live, yes. he was read his last rites and was in a coma for nearly a year. His name is Sean Swarmer. You can find his book, Keep Climbing. And he did all of this, by the way, with only one lung. He is quoted as saying the following, you can go a month without food. You can live three days without water but you can't go more than 60 seconds yeah, right. without hope. Yeah. Right. The Book of Lamentations was written by Jeremiah. And we find Jeremiah crying aloud yes. in the midst of mayhem. We find him at a time that his city, Jerusalem, has been ransacked by an invading Babylonian army. Yeah. The temple has been desolated. Yeah. The walls have been razed down. Mm -hmm. And people have gone to the lengths of even cannibalism. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, it's a tough time All right. in Jeremiah's day. And that is the context surrounding him pinning the words we read earlier. All right. Lamentations is split up into five chapters, and those five chapters of the first four are funeral dirges. They're mourning messages. All right. And the fifth is a prayer, and we find ourselves right in the middle. This funeral song, this message of mourning and couched within the 66 verses of chapter 3 we find this message and you see Jeremiah beginning in chapter 3 he declares himself as the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath he finds himself talking to God over and over and over and saying, he has led me and made me walk in darkness and yeah. not in the light. Okay. He has aged my flesh and my skin. Mm -hmm. He has set me in dark places. He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out. He has been a bear to me lying in wait. He has okay. caused the arrows of his quiver mm -hmm. to pierce my loins. He has made me drink wormwood. He has 
also broken my teeth yeah. with gravel. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, Jeremiah is crying aloud. Yes, sir. Right. And he is addressing God as he. Yeah. Right. And after he levies complaint after complaint after complaint, yeah. In these 66 verses, we come to verse 18 that sets the stage for our text this morning. Right. Right now. And again, he's addressed he and he and he. Uh, and finally, in verse 18, he reaches a low point and says, And I said, My strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Right. Now, you may remember from Sesame Street, they used to have a little song that they would talk about. Which one of these things is not like the other? And so throughout chapter 3, we've seen he and he and he. And finally, Jeremiah uses God's covenant name. He calls him the Lord. Yahweh Elohim. Yes. And something has to change inside the weeping prophet's attitude. All right. Once he calls on the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. You see, the book is organized, or the chapter rather, is organized. These 66 verses, they're organized into three different verse chunks. You see, the Hebrew alphabet has 22 letters, uh -huh. and so that gives you three verses, and they all happen to begin with the same Hebrew letter. Okay. Uh -huh. And so in verse 19 through 21, we come to the seventh set of three that begins with the seventh letter, the Hebrew letter Zayim, yeah. and then verses 22 through 24 is the eighth set. And it begins with the Hebrew letter Chet. Okay. And so now as we come into this new section, we find that Jeremiah is calling on God to remember. Okay. All right. So one thing I noticed just in the structure of how this chapter is constructed is you notice all the different ways that Jeremiah is levying his complaint as to his circumstance yeah. and all the different ways that he's experiencing pain yeah. but throughout all those wild accusations yes, there is a set organization yes, to how God has ordered his steps. Right. That there's always a purpose and a plan regardless of how your pain appears. Yeah. We've got to recognize that hand of God. Yeah. And even when we can't trace his hand, yeah. we can trust in yeah. him. Yeah. 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 But there's three things, three things that I want us to be mindful of right. as we look at verses 19 through 24. The first is number one, remember your hurts. Remember your hurt. Jeremiah calls on God to remember my affliction. Remember my roaming, the wormwood and the gall. You see, Jeremiah knows that God has a good memory. And so he calls on God to remember him. To remember, and when it says the, the affliction and the roaming... He's, he's calling on God to recognize the situation that he's in. Mm -hmm. To recognize what has happened individually to the prophet Jeremiah. And what has happened collectively to the nation of Judah and the city of Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Because now that their home is destroyed, they would have to roam. Yes. So Jeremiah is calling on God to remember my affliction and roaming the wormwood and the gall. And this wormwood and gall, this is to give us a picture of intense bitterness. Okay. It was a very bitter drink and it was used as a metaphor for bitterness. Yes. And he wants God to remember this 
And that gives us permission. It's okay to remember your past hurt and harm, yeah. your scars and scrapes. Right. We're not called to just bury down our afflictions okay. and not let ourselves show any type of uh, pain or we cannot cry right. or we cannot share our emotions with other people and in a healthy way process yes. our grief. Okay. Yes. It's okay to remember your loved ones. Yes that have passed on. It's okay to remember what you once had that was taken away. It's okay to remember the times you were hurt. It says, my soul still remembers and sinks within me. So Jeremiah goes from God remembering to him remembering in his soul and he says that it sinks within me sometimes we have some sad days sometimes we have days when we feel like we've literally hit rock bottom and it's okay when you have those days it's not that you have necessarily lost faith because you had a bad day for the psalmist says yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And so we've got to be careful because some of us want to run through the valley of the shadow of death. We just want to get way ahead of the shepherd. We don't want to show any type of emotion. We don't want to show any type of feeling. We just want to be stone-faced and stern and just grit our teeth and bear it and go through life. Just as we're not called to run through the valley, we're not called to remain in the valley. Yes, sir. It's okay to spend one night in the heartbreak hotel. It's another thing to move in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cannot wallow and wait in the valley of the shadow of death, thinking that that is some form of piety. As a Christian, you shouldn't always be sad. You shouldn't always be mourning. Right. It shouldn't, every day shouldn't be a bad day. Okay. Yeah. No. So we're called to walk, not run, not remain, but walk yeah. through the valley. Yeah. So now Jeremiah has called God to remember. He's remembered himself, and now he's hit rock bottom. But again, He's now called on the name of the Lord. And so you can see that there is a change in his attitude. So not only is it okay to remember your hurt, but it's important to recall his healing. It's important to recall his healing. This I recall to my mind. This I recall to my mind. I, I, I began to ponder this. What did Jeremiah call to his mind? Yes, sir. I think there were many things that came to his mind. But they had a very specific effect. Yes. One thing he probably recalled to his mind is that after all this levying of complaint, all right. that through all that, mm-hmm. God had at the very least kept him to be able to complain. Okay. Mm. At some point in the midst, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I, I've gone so far yes, from sir. every angle complaining about what's going on in life. But wait a minute, in order for me to complain, that means that number one, I had to have breath in my body. Right now. Yes, sir. Number two, I had to have the faculty of my mind. I had to be able to form the thought in order to express the complaint unto yes. God. Yes. Oh, and by the way, there is a God that is hearing me. Yeah. There is a God that is hearing me, so I have to recall to my mind that even though it seems bad, even though it seems like everything around me oh, yeah. is destroyed, yeah. this I recall Jesus. to my mind. Oh, yes. He also had to think that, that also God 
had been keeping his promises all the way. Yeah. All right. He had to think that even though his present condition was a certain way, that did not mean that that was his particular conclusion. All right. We're talking about the same man that also penned, mm. for I know the plans that I have for you. Yeah. Yeah. This is the same weeping prophet. Yeah. So we've got to be careful not to let our conditions yeah. automatically make us think that that is our conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. So not only do we remember our hurt, uh -huh. we recall his healing, uh -huh. but then we have to rejoice in hope. All right. All right. Yes, sir. You see, the door from hurting to healing swings open on the hinge of hope. All right. The door from hurting to healing uh -huh. swings open on the hinge of hope. Uh -huh. Look at verse 22. Through the Lord's mercies, yeah. we are not consumed yeah. because his compassions fail not. Yeah. You see, this, 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 this word here in the text that says mercies. It's a wonderful Hebrew word. My favorite, in fact. It's a Hebrew word called hesed. And when you say it, it's very Jewish. You have to kind of act like a, 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 a something stuck in your throat a little bit. Hesed, if you want to pronounce it correctly. And so this word in English, is yeah. translated mercy. All right. All right. But in, 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 in English, in order to give it an, a proper expression, mm. it would be translated loving kindness. Okay, come on, Sean. Okay. It's a covenant mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. that God has for his people. Mm. And this word that's translated mercies in verse 22, expresses a particular kind of love that God has for his people. And it's through this hesed, this loving kindness, translated as mercy, it is because of this that we are not consumed. It's not, it's not your business card. It's not your bank account. It's not your 401k. It's not the promises of politicians. Right. It's not any of these things. It is the Lord's mercies yeah. that are not consumed. Yeah. See, too many of us, yeah. up until about a month yeah. ago, yeah. thought that we were not consumed yeah. because of how good we were in our job. Yeah. Yeah. They thought they were not consumed because of how many times they go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Help, yeah. help. They thought they were not consumed yeah. because of their careful financial planning. Yeah. But we find yeah. that the real deal, yeah. that the truth is that yeah. it is through the Lord's yeah. mercy yeah. 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 that we are not yeah. consumed. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank His you. mercies never fail. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And not only do they never fail, but also they are fresh. Yeah. Why, when I say this, it says in verse 23, because they are new. Yeah. Every morning. Yeah. Every morning. Yeah. See, every time you go to sleep and wake up in the morning, yeah. it ought to be a reminder yeah. that God kept you one more time. Yeah. While you were lying there peacefully in your bed. Yeah. Without any sense of what was around you. Yeah. That somehow, some way, yeah. through the Lord's mercies, yeah. He kept you breathing. Yeah. Your blood pumping. Yeah. And at some point, it wasn't the alarm clock, but it was Him touching you yeah. with His finger of love. Yeah. Bringing yeah. back your respiration. Yeah. And allowing you to see another day. 
God wakes up before you every day because he never goes to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And every day he's trying to figure out how can I bless my child. His mercies never fail. His mercies are fresh and also his mercies are forever. Great is your faithfulness. Yeah. There's a wonderful hymn that was penned by Thomas Obadiah Chisholm and William Runyon entitled Great is Thy Faithfulness and it's based on this verse and the entire song is beautiful but there's one particular portion that sticks out to me in Great is Thy Faithfulness he says pardon for sin and a peace that endureth, yeah. and thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Yeah. Strength for today yeah. and bright hope for tomorrow. Yeah. Blessings yeah. all mine. Yeah. Watch this with 10,000 yeah. beside. Yeah. God has a yeah. stockpile of blessings. Yeah. Ten thousand set aside. Great is yes. your faithfulness. Yes. 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 Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Yes. So not only that, mm. as we rejoice in, in hope. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Jeremiah goes on to say that the Lord, in verse 24, the Lord is my portion. Yeah. Says my soul. The Lord is my portion, yes. says my soul. All right. You see, the priests, the Levites, they came from the tribe of Levi. Uh, they were set apart and unique in the nation of Israel. See, all the other tribes, they got land. They all got land. All right. But Levi didn't get any land, and it was the tithes that went to the temple that, that gave them their livelihood. And it was said that, that uh, the Levi, the Levites, mm -hmm. that God was their, God was their portion. Yes. Since they didn't get a physical piece of land, mm -hmm. and they were supported by the rest of the nation that the Lord was their, mm -hmm. their portion. Yes. And so Jeremiah is echoing that particular sentiment. It says, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. And you see, it's really interesting because you see how Jeremiah has put his faith into focus. And changed his entire, he says, in line with uh, what the Levites said were, their portion was gone. But if you can look at what God says, you don't have to go there, but Deuteronomy 32 and 9 says, for the Lord's portion is his people. <coughs> Jacob it generates the light. And the moon does not generate its own light, but yet it shines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because the moon is reflecting the light of the sun mm -hmm. in order to shine its light yeah. on the earth. Yeah. In the same way, the Lord looks at his people and says that we are his portion, mm -hmm. shining his light on us. Wow. And in the same way, we reflect that light back yes, and say that the Lord is yeah. our portion. Think of it whenever you go to Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and you have a big plate mm -hmm. and your mother, your auntie, your wife, whoever, has cooked up a blessing. <laughs> and on Thanksgiving, we're particularly prone to piling on, yeah. heaping yeah. on yeah. our Thanksgiving. On, and that is kind of an idea of how Jeremiah is looking at his portion. It's not saying a portion in terms of something small. Right. It's not that the Lord is something small to him, because yeah. we think that a portion yeah. is a small part. Yeah. The portion that Jeremiah is talking about is what has been set aside for him. Yeah. What yes. he yes. is allowed to have. Mm. What he is given 
by the Lord. And so he says, in response to the Lord saying that his people are his portion, the people are also declaring the Lord as their portion. Yeah. And lastly, in, in, in uh -huh. verse 24, after he declares the Lord is my portion, says my soul, mm -hmm. right. he now declares an echo of verse 21, yes, but with a small adjustment. I hope in him. You see, hope has to be attached to something. Yeah. Hope cannot just float. Hello. Where you just think that hopefully one day things may be better after a while. Hope must be anchored in something real. Hope yeah. must be attached to a particular object okay. right. in order for it to be effective. Because otherwise, you're not hoping, you're just dreaming. Okay. No, come on. Right. But in order for it to be hope, it must be attached to a worthy object, okay. yeah. a person, place, or thing. Okay. In particular, Jeremiah began yes, moving from just a generic person mm -hmm. calling out he, 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 he mm -hmm. to a particular person, the Lord God. All right. And if you look in your Bible, that, that H is probably, probably capitalized. Yeah. 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 That means it's a proper yeah. Yeah. name. It's a specific person that he's placing his hope in. So he's yes, saying, hey, at first I told you, therefore I have yes, hope. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. But now that my faith is in focus, yes, now I can tell you, not in general, but in particular, specifically, yes, therefore I hope in him. Yes, sir. If you want some clarification, follow me to Hebrews chapter 6, right. verse 19 to 20. Right. This Hope we have as an anchor of the soul, yeah, yeah, yeah. both sure and steadfast, yeah. and which enters the presence yeah. behind the veil, yeah. where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, yeah. having become the high priest forever, yeah. according to the order of Melchizedek. Yeah. So you see, his hope, Jeremiah is saying his hope is anchored in him. Yeah. Hope starts here. All right. When you anchor your hope in Jesus Christ. And that he is the provider for all things that you will need. He is the protector of all things that you have. He is the priest over your soul. And it says a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. There has to be an anchor for your soul. Yes. And hope starts at the moment that you have a worthy, steadfast object uh -huh. to anchor that hope. Yeah. 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 I want you today. Yes, Lord. What's anchoring your hope? Uh -huh. Come on. Good, man. Come yes, on. What have you attached what? yourself? Hope starts. Here. Yeah. God is keeping promises, and Jeremiah recognizes this, and that is either a terrific or a terrible truth, mm. depending on whether or not you're a believer or an unbeliever. Mm. All right. To the believer, yeah. the knowledge that God is keeping promises only assures you. Yeah. Yes. But if you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins. Uh -huh. right. I implore you. Yeah. God is in the promise keeping business. Yes, yes he is. And business is booming. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Yes, sir. He kept these promises and he says, Great is thy faithfulness. That was yes. both on what God said he would do right. positively and negatively. Yeah. He told Judah that he had a special 
condition for them, and he had a particular conclusion, but if they disobeyed, they would face judgment. And God made good on his promises. Yeah. Right. And he has a plan for you. Yes, sir. Hello. I just pray that you would take God seriously. Yes, yes Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Especially in these times. Yeah. Yeah. That you would take God at his word. Yeah. yeah. That he will do what he says. Yeah. That he will do. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So right now, he will. He will. right now, if you have he will. not yet known Jesus Christ yes, Lord God. Right. in the pardon of your sins, yes, yeah. hope starts here mm. and now. Yes, it does. Today is the day yes. of your salvation. Today, today is the day. Of your salvation. We have three, three appeals. Three appeals. The first is to those that do not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. If, if you have not yet recognized Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to do so. Now you might be wondering, well, Reverend, how can we do that? We're not physically in the building. No problem. No problem. You can call the church office. You can place a comment. And we would be happy to reach out to you. And answer any questions or give you any more information about the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God did. God came down from heaven in order to live a life that we should have lived and die a death that we should have died. In our place, he paid the price as a substitute. And it's not by, not by works. There's nothing that you can do to earn salvation. All you have to do is accept it as a friend. It's already been given.
and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Y'all thank you again, man, for all the reminder that our hope is in Jesus. Well, it's offering time. It's offering time for every walk. Thank you for your hearts. I want to again commend and thank the uh, members of the Good Shepherd Church again for your gracious gifts on last Sunday. We again, we know that God loves what he says, a cheerful giver. And so we pray that you will continue to give as God has commanded us to do so. And for those of you from outside, some folk from Louisiana and other places uh, that, uh, that contributed to our offering on last Sunday, thank you so much uh, for your gift and for the recognition again of what you have done. And we pray again that God will just continue to bless us as he is already doing. So get ready now. I don't want to give a little pause. Uh, for those of you that are sending by text and the like, you've gotten that information. You look at it on your phone uh, in ways that you can do by way of text, online, on the website, however it may be. We just ask that you would do that. For those of you that have our uh, the envelopes, and I want to thank y'all. That system really worked well last week. Say, I got my envelope again this week. We'll call your beacon as soon as the benediction is over. And he will be on your way. If he doesn't come, he'll send somebody uh, that can represent the church in order that you might be able to give your gift as you do on a weekly basis. Father, thank you now just for the gift and for the giver. It's clear to us the only reason we got anything to give in the first place is because you gave it. You supplied it by your mercies. And for that, we are so grateful. Again, we say great is your faithfulness to us. And we're grateful again for the portion that you give us. And what we know, Lord, that what you give to us is even more than we can actually handle. So we thank you again for your graciousness and your abundance toward us. I pray now that you would receive our service of worship as we give the spirit of love and the spirit of unity and the spirit of obedience to you. So our prayer we pray in Christ's name and his name alone we pray in and all who agree said amen. 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 Listen, we are getting ready to transition shortly to our Sunday school. We're going to cut off for about 10 minutes, kind of reset our, 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 our setting. Uh, and then we're going to come back for a brief time. Just in the word of God, we're going to call it our Sunday school uh, now uh, in terms of getting getting ourselves uh, acclimated because what I don't want us to have to happen with us is that we get used to doing this. I'm just going to trust God. We're not going to have to keep doing this. Yeah. And so the hope yeah. is that we use something different in mind. Again, we are, we're always trusted in His will. Before we do this, then, before we close today, one thing I want to ask us to do, we know we're praying for uh, those in the medical field. We call those, those frontliners right now who are dealing with patients of the COVID-19 virus, coronavirus and the like. I want to ask us before we leave to pray specifically, a little bit more specifically for our members of our church, uh, Eric Berry, uh, Deborah Tatum, uh, Fiesta Derry, uh, Lucretia Lavalier, uh, Carmen Harris, and Rita Navy. These are persons that I know uh, definitely that any of else of you that we may have overlooked that are part of it, that, that are in the medical field. Um, uh, Leanna is part of the, the, the health children's uh, system. Texas children, thank you. Thank you, Texas children, uh, healthcare system there. And so we want to pray for those members before we leave today, before we give our benediction today. So could you bow with me for just a moment, just wherever you are. Father, we want to thank you for all of those in the medical field who are literally in some ways, some ways, risking their lives, taking care of others. I heard Philip say the other day, it's, it's a way of that the carers in some way can become the carriers. Uh, God, in some way, those who are helping others can even be infected themselves. And so God, I pray, I pray, I pray for those persons all over the world, all over the world who are having to care for those who have been infected by this contagious virus. And so, God, we count on the fact that you are our protector. We've seen you do it over and over again. And we count on the fact that you're going to continue to protect us. You're going to continue to lead and guide us and direct us. And so today, lift up again before you, Eric Berry, who has had to deal with people directly uh, with the virus. But, God, you have kept him, and he's done his part. And I pray for him and those, the staff that is around him, that they would be protected. I pray uh, for Sister Biesta Derry, who is in Bentar Hospital, Namely, dealing with the babies that are there to care of our babies, but knowing again 
that they also have the issue of possible exposure. Pray for the priest Lavalier who deals with people in hospice care. Uh, we know again what's going on there in those situations. So God, I ask your protection upon her. Pray again for uh, Deborah Tatum uh, involved with having to assess people before they go to the doctor, before they go to the hospital. And so Lord, she's talked to some who, who have been, been tested positive. So I pray that you continue to give wisdom and knowledge and understanding that as they move forward, they can do it the right way. Then I pray for Carmen. Lord, now her office is closed, but has had to already deal with people in the dentist's office and those things that she has had to experience. I pray for Rita, Lord, in her work, in her endeavor, in, 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 in meeting various patients in various ways. I pray your protection upon them, just as I pray your protection upon everyone else. Pray for our own sister Betty Savannah, Lord. She is going through a tough time. We pray, God, that you would provide as only you can provide. We ask again your grace and your mercy be upon Greta, her daughter, on Marvin, her son, on her son and her daughter, Lord, as they see about them. I pray that you continue to keep them in your perfect peace with their minds always stayed on you. For those that are yet recovering from bereavement from yesterday, from Friday, God, we ask again your peace. Then, Lord, we'll ask one more time. Give healing to the land. Provide the miracle that's needed. Provide the medical cure that's needed. Protect the medical personnel that are working with patients. Because we are convinced, Lord, that this thing is in your hands. Our money is not doing it. Our knowledge is not doing it. But God, we know ultimately your power has to prevail. And so we thank you again for what you do and the way that you do it. Now, Lord, to you who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything that we could ask or think you alone was the only wise God who has dominion and power. You got it now and you have it forever. We ask again that you continue to keep us Lead, guard, guide us, direct us, and protect us. And we will be careful. Oh, yeah. No bragging rights on our own. No credit for us. Yes. But all the glory, yes, all the honor, and all the praise yes, will be yours. Yes, Thank you again for the preacher and for the preach yes, word today. And yes, reminding yes, us, hope starts yes, here. Yeah, oh, it starts with us and our belief, our hope yes, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for allowing us this opportunity to praise and worship you once again. It's in Christ's name we pray, in his name alone we pray it. And all who agree said amen. 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 I'm going to ask again for our members if you would fade out, uh, probably for about 10 minutes. Uh, go get your snacks. That's what y'all do after Sunday school. Uh, go get your snacks and all that kind of thing. And then uh, in 10 minutes we will resume and come back again just for a brief moment. It won't be, it won't be long. I'm, I'm saying 10, 20 minutes uh, just to be able again to help us to reconnect. Uh, in terms of what we can do going forward. Again, those of you that are listening by phone, if you would just hang up for 10 minutes, we'll come back on by phone, and then we'll see you all in just uh, in about 10 minutes. Until we meet again, God bless and keep all of you. Listen, everybody, take care of everybody. Amen. See about one another. Amen? God love you. I do too. Bye-bye.